Hi everyone, this is Kane here. Um, just going to give you a brief overview of what we did today in class in case you missed our call. The first thing that we looked at was last week we made portraits and so we are taking that and we are moving on to a different type of picture. We are going to create an impressionistic landscape. A landscape is a picture of something that is outside. So a scene that you see outside. Um, we're going to do this in somewhat of an exaggerated style with lots of lines and big marks, um, which helps this fall under the category of impressionism. And we took a quick look at the artist Vincent Van Gogh. We looked at his portrait last week where you can see there's a number of lines um, and exaggerated marks that he's used to create his portrait, making this style impressionism. And many of you are familiar with his picture, Starry Night, his painting. What I want you to notice about his painting is that he has used these exaggerated lines and marks, and he's also created a landscape showing multiple steps building up his picture. So we have the ground area here where you see all of the houses on the bottom. And then you see he has some um, trees and foliage here building up. So he's got this area first, then he's got the trees, then it builds up higher into a hill and then even higher yet with some mountains behind, and then he gets into the details of the sky. We talked about how this line here is the horizon line. In our pictures, the horizon line defines the area where the sky stops and the ground begins, okay? So that is something that we worked on in our picture. I'm gonna show you very quickly um, what we created today. So we created a landscape picture similar in style to that of Starry Night, where we stacked using this step idea of different patterns and different exaggerated lines to decorate our picture. The first thing that we did was using a black crayon or colored pencil or marker, we created the house. To do that, we created a house out of very basic shapes. And I'm gonna go rather fast to keep your video short, but if you would like to pause at any point so that you can take time for drawing, go ahead and do that, okay? So we created this using many of the basic shapes that we've been working on in class. We started with a square, and then we added a little line on each side. Now notice I didn't draw this at the very bottom of my paper or at the very top kind of hanging out right here in the middle, okay? And I made a little line on each side so that the roof hangs over the edges of the walls of my house. And I made a little triangle shape for the roof, okay? Then we added some details like the door, we added some windows, okay? And students, some students added a little chimney you can add as much details as you would like to to your house. Maybe I'll have a circular window up here above the door. Okay, the next thing that we added was a hill that our house is sitting on. To do that, I'm gonna add a little line right here. And then I'm going to make the hill a rolling hill using a wavy line on the side. Then we divided up this ground area using another wavy line showing some additional hills at the bottom. And to add in that horizon line like Vincent Van Gogh, we're gonna stop our ground. We're gonna show a little bit of the background because the hills are continuing up behind our house. And we're going to draw another line like this to make our horizon line. Then some students chose to go in and add some scalloped lines. And this was optional how they wanted to decorate that to show little bushes. The next step was to take markers. Now, 
third, second and third grade added more details to their home. They added the frames for the windows. Some of them added a um, tower portion in the background. Um, so they added different designs to their house. Okay, bring this down a little farther here. And since I made that little mistake, I'm just going to make this as part of the pattern. Okay, and they also um, added, like I was saying, the frames and some just additional little details on the house for the second and third grade. Okay, then to create our patterns, third grade used crayons or markers, if they were choosing to paint, they needed to use mar or crayons because the marker is washable if you're using Crayola and it will spread when you put water on it, similar to a watercolor. So if you are planning to paint, you wanna make sure you do your detailing with crayons, okay? And we just went in and focused again on pattern, which we've talked a lot this year about pattern and different lines. And we used the different lines, repeating, when something repeats, it makes it a pattern. So we use the different lines and shape to add in some patterns to our pictures. And I'm just going to do some vertical lines here, which vertical lines mean, and I'm working fast here, um, mean up and down. So vertical lines up and down. And we learned about what's called a crosshatch pattern. When you have a line on a diagonal like this, If you go over it with the same type of diagonal line going in the opposite direction, you now have what's called a crosshatch pattern. Okay, so we filled in our picture with patterns and then we moved on to the sky. So everything above this line here is now going to be the sky. So some students chose to add in a sun, some added in clouds. Um, you could add whichever details you wanted to add. I'm going to use a blue marker on this and make some bigger lines. I'm going to do, don't forget these need to continue over onto the other side of the house. So that's a little bit tricky and I'm going to create these really not quite in a pattern because they're sort of not totally the same, but I'm kind of mimicking that swirly style of Vincent van Gogh. And I'm using my cool colors, the blue and the purple. And filling in that sky. And students chose, some students filled in their sun or parts of their sky with a pattern or you could color in something solid. Some students came in and colored portions of their house, a solid color while others used pattern, again, to fill in the house. Okay, so some students came in with the marker or their crayons and created a pattern on the house. <clears throat> then, at the very end, some students chose to use their watercolor palette like this. Remember, if you're using your watercolors and you want to use yellow, use it first. You can see how dirty this yellow has become. Um, so always use that first before your water gets really dirty. And using a decent amount of water, soften up your watercolors. And if you paint over the crayon, you can see how the crayon is resisting. If you've pressed hard enough, you'll see that the crayon is resisting the water. So it doesn't cover up your crayon details. And let me show you here on an area that's, I'll do a different color so they're quite different. So you can see that a little bit better. 
And this was how we created our Vincent Van Gogh inspired landscape picture. I hope you have fun creating this. If you take time, if you missed class and created this, please send me a picture. I'd love to see it. Thank you so much.